but it's kind of a sad day when we're married to a person who has basic goodwill, who's basically concerned they're not getting up early in the morning to storyboard ways to irritate us and annoy us. And, and but we're taking up offense and we resent them when really they're just defensively insecurely reacting to something we said or did earlier and if we're honest about that we can begin to make a change and we talk how to get off that and i know that there are several cycles that you refer to in your book but i just want to double click for a minute on on what you're talking about here you say in your book that love is not enough and many of us have been programmed to think that, well, if, if, if you would just learn to love her better and she would just learn to love him, it's all about love. God is love. Love one another. Uh, love your enemy, uh, you know, which sometimes our spouse can feel like an enemy. Why do you say love is not enough? Well, it, it's not because love isn't important, but neither Paul nor Peter ever command a wife to agape love a, a, a wife. There's agape love, which is the God-like, unconditional love. Then there's phileo, Philadelphia. You're, you're to phileo your husband in Titus to uh, not phileo him, but phileo, but it's not a God. <laughs> That's a key distinction. I think you need to That's repeat right. that. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And then there's eros. And those are the three, agape, phileo, and eros are the three components of marital love. But no wife is commanded to agape love her husband. And I meditated on that, and I realized the Lord put it within the nature of women to nurture. Women love to love. You have to wound her at the level of intimacy to get her to stop loving. So God doesn't command her to do what he created her to do. Peter in 1 Peter 3 says, you win a disobedient husband through your respectful behavior. He walked with the Lord of love for three years and never commands a wife to agape love. So as a biblicist studying the Bible, I realized this is significant. And so the question is, well, isn't love enough? Well, you could say that, but the apostles are saying there must be something that happens in a woman when she feels unloved. She reacts in a way that she thinks is the loving thing to do, but in the man's world, it appears disdainful, contemptuous, belittling, and disrespectful. She doesn't intend that. That's not the goal. And so my mission has been to help men decode that. But also I say to women, if you misrepresent yourself, you're going to be misinterpreted. If at the end of the day, you're not trying to diss him, but he thinks you are, you need to develop a new vocabulary to disarm him that that's not your intent. But in answer to your question, I landed on the love and respect message because that's the summation of the greatest treatise in the New Testament. Paul says a husband must love and a wife must respect. And Peter also said you win a disobedient husband through respect. They landed squarely on that. And so I did as well. So if a couple is experiencing the chaos of the crazy cycle, you don't respect me, well, you don't love me, and when you start loving me, then I'll start to show you the respect that you deserve, but right now you haven't earned any of my respect. How do they move out of that into the healthier place of the energizing cycle you talk about? Well, the crazy cycle, you know, we've all heard the definition of insanity. You keep doing the same thing over and over again with the same ill effects. And so if a couple's been married 10 years and they're in that crazy cycle, and most everybody, people say, you just said in five minutes what described 25 years of my marriage. Very few people differ with this. Uh, there are some exceptions, but overall, uh, everybody gets it. Yeah, that's where we live. Even if she needs respect, he needs love. I can see how that plays out in our relationship. And so if we keep reacting the way that you're talking about and keep blaming the other person for my reaction, then it's just going to keep spinning. So people have to come to a point where they make a decision. And people always ask me, well, who moves first to jump off the crazy cycle? And I say, well, the one who sees himself or herself as the most mature uh, moves first. And of course, <laughs> if we think that our spouse is always reacting in this childish way, then we're conceding to the fact that we see ourselves as the most mature. And I also say, people say, but I don't know if I can do this, Emerson. I said, well, let me say it this way. If you were to get $30 million tax-free for the next six weeks, if, if you never spun on the crazy cycle or got angry at your spouse, would you over the next six weeks, and there'd be a video crew following 24-7 for $30 million untaxed, uh, would you spin on the crazy cycle? Would you do your part to get off of it? Would you stop being angry? And every, the crowds that we, you know, we do our conference, oh, no, yeah, yeah. I said, so here's the point. We can do this. We're just not getting paid enough. That's right. We, we, we do it for money, but we wouldn't do it That's for right. God and for our spouse. Wow, uh, that, that, that's convicting. Now, I know that when we read your book, we 
study through the, the group study series or, or attend one of your conferences, we'll learn how to do that, how to get out of this crazy cycle into an energizing cycle. Uh, you talk in your book uh, with regard to the question, what women actually want, you've got this acronym, COUPLE, C-O-U-P-L-E. What, what does that stand for? Uh, closeness, openness, understanding, peacemaking, loyalty, and esteem. And when a man is committed, he won't do it perfectly, but uh, oftentimes when the spirit of a wife deflates, if you take that as a checklist, why is she deflating? Why is she upset? Did I send a message to her that I don't want to be close with her? I don't want to be open with her. I don't want to understand her. I don't want to be at peace with her. I don't want to be loyal to her. I don't want to esteem her. And respect or esteem is part and parcel of love. She needs to be honored. Peter's very clear. Honor your wife as a fellow heir of the grace of life. But when a man doesn't do those things, uh, then she's going to deflate. But if a man in good willed, you know, motivation moves toward his wife to do that, or he humbly confesses, I failed to do that, I'm sorry, most every woman I know will soften, will forgive, will let him start again, will appreciate him. She'll even be bragging about him to her women friends. But that's the energizing cycle. And one of the things we say to, to get off that crazy cycle, I think one of the things we need to do is decode, is your wife really trying to dish you? Or is she just crying out for love? And did you say or do something earlier that felt unloving to her, which explains her reaction? She's trying to say to you, I'm feeling unloved. She's not trying to say, I don't respect you. And ladies, when your husband shuts down on you and reacts in a way that feels unloving, did you say or do something prior to that that was disrespectful? Women have photographic memories. They'll say, well, yes, but he should know I didn't mean it. <laughs> he should know I didn't mean it. And so one of the things I encourage people to do is to not personalize on the crazy cycle too quickly. Sarah will react to me, I react, but we realize, you know, we're vulnerable. We're insecure people at times, and we give the benefit of the doubt to each other. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 7, 33 and 34, the husband is concerned about how to please his wife, and the wife is concerned about how to please her husband. And we've got to take that by faith, unless we're married to Hitler's distant cousin, you know, I mean, and there are evil people out there. But it's kind of a sad day when we're married to a person who has basic goodwill, who's basically concerned. They're not getting up early in the morning to storyboard ways to irritate us and annoy us. And, and, but we're taking up offense and we resent them when really they're just defensively, insecurely reacting to something we said or did earlier. And if we're honest about that, we can begin to make a change. And we talk how to get off that. But then you transition to the energizing cycle, which is how do you energize somebody? How do you motivate somebody? Mm. How do you influence them? And there's a fine line between manipulation and motivation. You know, a guy says, I've been right. loving today. Can we have sex? I mean, that's manipulation. But motivation is, I really want to learn how to be close, to be open, to be understanding, to be at peace with you, to be loyal to you. Esteem. You know, my family of origin, I don't know how to do this. I don't know. I don't want to be unloving. I mean, every wife just softens when she hears her husband talk that way. It's just powerful. So you've got an acronym for the ladies. Couples. Now let, let's flip the script and talk about what you say guys are really looking for from their wives. Um, what are some practical things that she can do to respect the man in her life? The acronym that you have for the guys is CHAIRS. I probably would have went for Lazy Boy Recliner, but that's probably got too many letters in it. So <laughs> what, what does CHAIRS stand for? Well, I think it, it's more abstract. We talk about conquest, uh, hierarchy, authority, insight, relationship, shoulder to shoulder, we talk about, and then sexuality. And uh, those are abstract. I talk about women have the, you know, the romantic languages, French, Italian, and couple, C-O-U-P-L-E. It's just so right. But then when we talk chairs, it's guttural. It's, uh, it's Russian. You know, it's German. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so instead of trying to uh, uh, unpack that, I think the thing I always begin with, let them read that because I go into the fuller development. And I will say that almost every man who's read chairs says, that's me. That's me. That's who I am. That's who your son will be. And so it doesn't make sense to the female. But I will tell you, when you see his spirit deflate and he withdraws from you, just ask yourself, did I step on his air hose, so to speak, in one of those six areas? But most women ask the first question, Emerson, I have no idea what you mean about even respect. And in psychology, we talk about it as unconditional positive regard toward the spirit of another person. Unconditional positive regard toward the spirit of a person. Unconditional love and unconditional respect. Many people sense intuitively what unconditional love is, and that's right, but unconditional respect is an oxymoron. It's a contradiction of terms to them that respect must be earned, respect must be deserved. Yeah. But here's the deal. Unconditional 
means there's no condition or situation or circumstance that can get me to hate you or show you contempt. God's command to me is to be loving and respectful apart from you. And people get confused. They think that I am the way I am because you caused me to be that way. Yes, they affect us, but they don't cause us to become a contemptuous, hateful person. They don't have that power. That's a choice I make. They can uh, motivate me to want to do that, but at the end of the day, that's my decision. But unconditional, some people get confused about that. And so what we're talking about here with regard to respect is when a woman is upset, can she distinguish the thing that's not respectable that he's done and respectfully communicate to his spirit about that which was not respectable? Mm. Every male mm. leader toward another man, that's how he approaches. He honors the inner man while he confronts those things that aren't honorable. He never shows contempt toward the spirit of the man. Because when you do that, you've got an enemy and you're going to lose his heart. And women have to practice this. They, In one way you do this, I'm not trying to dis, dis you right now. I'm not trying to dishonor you. Help me understand. What you did hurt me. You're an honorable man who would die for me if I don't kill you first. But help me say this in a way that you don't just shut down on me. This is unacceptable with me. But help me understand this. You're an honorable man. See, she's going back before. She's, she's confronting the behavior without disapproving the male spirit. And that's an art and a skill that has to be developed. But we talk about respectful attitude coming at his spirit from your demeanor. And when a woman is upset, the University of Washington study that she shows these gestures of contempt, the eyes darken, the face sours, the sigh, the rolling of the head and the eyes, the hand on the hips, the scolding finger, all of these are maternal but in the male world, male world, they are they are they're mothering, they're disrespectful, they're belittling, and so she ends up misrepresenting herself. So she has to let him know that that's not her mission. Her mission is, I need something from you that only you can meet, and I'm feeling insecure, and I need you right now to understand my heart. So how do I say this without offending you? He'll engage that, and I tell women, try it out for a while and see if what I said isn't true. Hi, I'm Kirk Cameron, and thanks for watching the Kirk Cameron on TVN YouTube channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. A couple of things. Please make sure that you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so that you're notified every time a new video is posted. And be sure to share your takeaway in the comments and invite a friend to join the conversation.